Good morning, Dylan. Good morning. It's good to be here. Excited for CRS. To Always start. excited, really you know. Fun. We've done this for a few years now, and it's just fun to see everybody, and I enjoy hanging out, so it's cool. Yep. And you get to talk about your great new song, Crazy Yeah, Over I'm so pumped about it. Uh, wrote this song with one of my best friends, my roommate, right for the same publishing company, So it's real, and he's my producer. So it's wow, just really, yeah, of, it is, you know, <laughs> we're, we're about really the same shared. age. So it's just cool to make music and create with one of your best friends. So, mm -hmm. and it went top 40 this past week. So we're excited. I made a note of that to bring <laughs> that up. Like that is, that's a big deal because that's hard. It is. You know, I've, my first single I put out two or three years ago. And so this is the first song I've had to go top 40 and it's doing well. We've sold over a hundred thousand downloads already. So it's just a fun time. I bet. And one of the things that I love about it is that it's it's a simple song about a simple moment yeah and that that is i mean everybody keeps saying it but it was kind of lost a little bit it's that was that's the basis of country music oh absolutely yeah i mean some of my favorite songs are just simple songs i love imagery too so if you can put me somewhere through in a song and it's just simple i don't have to really think about it it's just cool yeah and as we brought up before um everything was switched on is the idea of um, creative courage, that idea of yeah. I'm going to put something of myself out there. Sure. How did that feel, specifically with with this type of song, where it's, it feels like a really personal, you know, this is something that happened to me. I'm sharing this conversation I had with someone. Mm -hmm. How does that feel when you when you put something out there and you go, okay, I know it's on iTunes now. Yep. Now I'm going to check Twitter. <laughs> I'll be honest, I mean, it really is, it's, it's, you get nervous, you know, you don't really know what to expect from people, you know, um, you hope they like it, yeah, but you never know, and so, we put it out, and we said, okay, let's see how this goes, and then you, the tweets start coming in, and the Instagram posts come in, you're like, okay, I think they're liking it, and then you go to your shows, and they're singing it back to you, and then you have people coming up saying, this is our wedding song, and that's when it's like, this is, yeah. this is really cool. Something I sat down in my living room with one of my best friends and started just, you know, messing around the guitar with. And now people are going and buying it on iTunes and singing it and first dance at their wedding and yeah. it's pretty special. That is something that I, do you ever really get over that? That's no. something that you, you do to, because you have to, you know, you're called to do it and you're sitting on your couch with guitars with your buddy and all of that stuff comes out of that moment. Is that yep. something that ever really kind of you can wrap your head around? Not at all. You know, I don't take any of that for granted. And I think back all the time how crazy, how crazy of a business this is, you know, <laughs> that we can actually, we can actually do that. I can sit down tonight. I can go home and I can sit down on my couch. And if, you know, good Lord willing, if I write a great song, you know, a month or two from now, people could be singing it back to me. It's just something you never, it's just crazy how it works out. It is pretty. Like sometimes you think about it, you're like this is my life. Yeah, really? I know it's, it this is. This is a real thing. <laughs> the act of being creative to me means you're making yourself vulnerable, mm -hmm. which means you're being courageous. Yeah. How do you view that? Like vulnerability is courage. Um, how how do you see? Is that something you actively think about, or <sighs> not really? Do you try not to. What I've what I've come to would try to do the most is I mean, everybody has an opinion. You know, you have an opinion, I have an opinion. You know, it's just, it's an opinion. It's the way it is. And so the most recent thing, I mean, I'll, this is just an example. Um, I did a cover of, just, of a Justin Bieber song. Okay. Now, country fans could be like, oh, Justin Bieber. No, you, uh, that's, but you have to, you have to branch out. You have to try, you know. So it's actually a really good song, but people put, you know, could put the name with it and be like, no, it's a good song. Yeah. Um, Justin's a great artist. And so we, we, we took our chances and we put it out and we put it out on iTunes the other night. And it's, it, there's probably going to be some people who go, what is this? But, there's, you know, it's gotten great reviews so far. And the video comes out tomorrow. We did a video for it as well. The song's called Love Yourself. And so uh, it's, a, it's a step we had to take. And I was nervous to do it. But at the same time, you can't really think about it. Just go for it. Just do it and be creative and go on. I like that. I really like that you did that. Um, how do you filter the feedback? Because you can't let it all in. No. Because you'll go crazy. But you need <clears> to <throat> listen to constructive criticism, things that are going to help you get better. How do you? Where do you draw that line? It's you know what, I don't really know. I mean, I do. I do read the comments and I listen to what people say. But creativity is something within yourself. You have your own creativity. I have my own creativity. Yeah. And like I said, it's an opinion. Just because it doesn't reach to everybody 
doesn't mean it's horrible. Just because I don't like something that you would do does not mean it is bad. It could be the best thing on the earth. I just right. didn't like it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I try, like I said, I try not to let it get to me. I do read the comments, and, you know, it's great when I see that people dig it, but there are going to be some people that's like, eh, I don't know, but it's okay. It's all good. Yeah. So for you, the, the, the major thing is as long as you still feel if you're doing you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's yeah, the, the, moment, the moment you put something out and you're like, oh, why did I do that? You can't, you have to be confident. You have to be confident about it and do what you need to do. I mean, don't do something stupid, but. Oh, define that though. Stupid. What is that? What would well, that be? Stupid, uh, something that's going to hurt your career. Yeah. You know, ultimately. So you have to think, you have to think through the steps. But I don't think putting out a bad song is going to hurt your career. Doing something like, I don't know, posting a bad photo or something, a risque photo. Careful. That's right. That's not. That's not creativity. Right. That's, that's just being. That's, that's yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. no, I mean your creative judgment is uh, like I said, it's within yourself. It's what, yeah. everybody's different. So just got to go for it. You're also with a group of people who have an enormous amount of experience. Yeah. Who are around you. Absolutely. That must help. To Yo, know yeah. that you know they've been there, they've done it, they've taken people. To yeah, and I and I go to them. Of number one. I go to them for their opinion. You know, if I have an idea, I call them and say, "Hey, I got this idea." Now, I mean, I always take their opinion, but most of the time I do because yeah. you know you get a group of people around, and if you know six, seven people have the same answer, hey, you shouldn't do that. Probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> but if they're like, "Yeah, you should go for it," absolutely. And that's I think in. Because mo- the people I work with are mostly independent artists or new artists. And one of the things that drives me crazy is there are a lot of people who have a lot of opinions for what these people should be doing, yeah. but those people don't have a track record. Mm. And I always go, <clears throat> what, is, what is the evidence you can bring that that's the right thing to do for somebody? Yeah. How did you struggle with that? early on before curb and before those people were in your life yeah i mean was was that inner guide that strong already no it was not and i I leaned on i leaned on my dad a lot you know my dad my mom and dad raised me my dad was in the business so i leaned on him yeah until you know it it, 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 the older you get it just happens you find yourself as a person yeah as an artist and i did you know i moved this town i had no idea i just knew i loved country music i wanted i sang i do but then the more I was here and the more I was creative and wrote and recorded, the more I found myself as an artist. And so I just now I just take that. I know who I am as an artist. I'm just going to go do it, you know, yeah. and yeah. And I think that's why your live um, connection is so strong, because I think people feel that. Cool. You know, if somebody steps on a stage yeah. and is like, well, I'm here because my label told me what to wear and what to sing, yeah. that's not going to go very Yeah, and far, you can't be cocky about it. You know, yeah. you have to listen to people still and take what they say, but... You do have to know who you are and, uh, and go for it. What was that process like for you to find that out? And did that happen more on stage or in the writer's room? Both. You, you learned who you were. Both. I mean, playing shows every night and being on stage and seeing what songs work for the crowd or what they really enjoy, what they're going to dance to and smile and laugh and have a good time to. Yeah. You figure it out real quick, you know. And so um, that and being in the writer's room as well. You know, being in there with your buddies and writing. And for me, I like to write what I'm actually inspired about. You know, I don't want to get in there and just write a song. That's not me. I want to be inspired about it. And so create yeah. something that, that is me. And so, but it took time. You know, it really did. Of course. It just took time. And how do you handle that part? Because this is a slow business. I mean, oh, I'm yeah. sure your dad warned you about that before He did. He moved. told me, he said, son, um, it's not an overnight success. <laughs> and business. I didn't get that, but I understand it now. How do you handle that need to, to stay patient? And, and to go, you know, every, to see every little win as a little win rather than, oh, I don't have this big prize yet, but to understand that everything works toward that. I look at, I look at the, what I'm, my job as a career, and I don't want it to last for a week or two weeks or a month or a year or two years. I want it to last for several years, 10 years, 20 years, however long it takes. And so I look at it as building blocks, you know. It's... Um, it's just part of it. You know, you have to get in there and write your songs, do your album, and you got your first album done, you got a few singles off of it. All right, let's get ready for the next album. And so I don't want it to happen overnight. You know, maybe I did when I was younger. But like yeah. I said, the older I get, you realize things. And so yeah. it's, uh, it's fun watching it build gradually. And through social media, we can do that. You see the fan base growing gradually, and so it's really cool. And it's, 
yeah, gradual, but still really impressive. Because it's when I was looking at those numbers, and you see like 2013 and 2015 numbers. Yeah. Boom. I mean, that was. But that's what that, that's that, that's think, what drives me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You see that, you're like, oh wow, we did that in two years, three years. Yeah. I can't wait for the next two or three years, you know. And so you just continue to just drive and drive and drive, and that's what fuels the fire. So this isn't on my piece of paper, but now that you're talking about this, <laughs> yeah. what is what is the motivation? What makes you keep showing up? What makes you keep going? Okay, roommate, grab your guitar. I got an idea. Let's write another one. Let's get on the bus. Let's go play a bunch of shows. What is at core? What yep. is that motivation? What makes you keep for me? Up? For me. I love entertaining. I love being on stage and seeing people, like I said, well, like a smile and laugh and dance. And so I just want to, you know, one day look out there and see thousands and thousands of people do that and know, wow, like I said earlier, I sat in my living room and wrote a song yeah. with my best friend. And now I get to share it to all these people and they love it. That's what drives me. I just I want that to happen, and it's it's happened in smaller instances. You know, right yeah. now we're playing smaller clubs, and a lot of people are coming out and they're doing the same thing. And that's what that's what keeps me going. You know, it's yeah. just it's just awesome knowing that people are getting something from it. Like I said, whether they're dancing, or I've had people come up and say, "Hey, that song helped me through a breakup," or yeah. "My best friend died." And I had people come the other day and say, "Hey, my best friend died in a plane crash. This is the song that helped me. Thank wow. you for playing it tonight." That's what it. That's what keeps me going. Yeah. yeah then you know. We're that's doing That's why something. I picked up that yeah. guitar. All Absolutely. That time. I didn't know it then, but now, yeah. now I know. One of the things that I thought <clears throat> was really interesting for, for your live work is that your brother's in the band, mm -hmm. and you have other two two other brothers. I do. My little <laughs> my little brother plays lead guitar, and uh, the drummer and the bass player they're also brothers. So there's two sets of brothers, um, and it's just really cool sound. So, drummer. And bass player brothers, my brother, and then the keyboard player is one of the best friends of the drummer and bass player. So it's just, we've all become really close and we're all in our, you know, mid-twenties to young twenties. So it's, it's really cool. And does it make, because that's one of the, one of, because of what I do, one of the first questions that I thought about is, does it make um, getting out there and taking those creative risks, does it make it easier on Absolutely. stage? Absolutely. Because your brother's with you and you guys know each other. And you yeah, know each other's I mean, brother. your band, just like every other artist, usually your band is some of your best friends. And so when you go out on stage every night, you're not alone. You got yeah. your best friends up there to lean on and play with, you know, like walk up, put your arm around them and mess with them. You know, it's, it's really cool, yeah. you know, to have that bond up there. And it makes it easier to connect to a crowd. And a crowd knows it. They know if you're having a good time. They know if the band's having a good time, you know. So when everybody's having a good time on stage, I feel like everyone's having a good time as far as the crowd goes. Yeah, because I had, not naming the names of the bands, um, <laughs> I was at a, a show recently, and it was, you know, like one after another, you know, about seven or eight acts in the same night. And there were two acts in particular that I was like, okay, guys, if you're not enjoying yourself up there, Nobody's going to enjoy it, yeah. Just don't do it. No. <laughs> like, we're, we're not enjoying watching you because yeah. you're like... You know, looking bored on stage. That's like, not, no, not at all. No. <laughs> we notice. <laughs> the, the, the second to last question is kind of, and I'm looking for something specific. Um, when was a time where you maybe didn't stay as patient <clears throat> or made a decision that later you were like, yeah, that maybe was not the, really the right thing to do at the time? Um, and what, what caused you making that decision? Yeah, I mean... I mean, every day you're, you're tempted with the fact of, let me be impatient. Oh, I'm ready to have this now, da, 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 da. But uh, I'm surrounded by a really good group of people as far as management and label. Sure. Yeah. And I, they, they, really, they really keep me grounded and keep me patient. And let's go back to the band. You know, the, the band gets it as well. It's, like I said earlier, it's just building blocks. Yeah. You know, it just it takes time. And so um, the way I've dealt with it is just, like I said, surrounding myself with really good people. Yeah. And was there something, and not, I'm not looking for names, but kind of situations where you can think, oh, you know, I kind of pushed that through a little too fast. Now I wouldn't do that anymore. Um, or <clears throat> I chose to go this route and now I understand that's not really me. Um, yeah. It, what, how do you grow through, through stuff like that? I mean, you're, you're constantly growing as an artist. And so when you ask that, the first thing I think about is my music. 
Um, the music I'm recording now is totally different than the music I was recording three or four years ago. And, um, and part of that is, like I said earlier, you're just trying to find yourself as an artist. And so, but your music is, gonna, your music is going to constantly change because the times are constantly changing. So. And you're learning, you're growing. Absolutely. You're getting more experience as a writer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or even more of a voice. Oh, it's yeah. Production suite. Yeah. Or you can go, yeah, no, I don't agree with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more success way, you have. The record says Dylan Scott, <laughs> not your yeah. name. More, yeah. su- more yeah. success you have, the more you have a little, a little more rain on that. But, yeah. you know, once again, like I said, the guys at Curb Records and management, they're really good to us. So we do have a voice, and it's cool they let us have a voice. Yeah. And the, oh, one thing, definitely, about goal, talk about goal setting, Opry. Yeah. Um, how did that lead up, because I'm almost, I'm almost more interested in that lead up when they tell you, like, hey, you got it, you're going to do this. Yeah. You know, how many weeks was in between were you knowing and actually um, on the About opera? four weeks. Oh, God, that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> what were those four weeks like? It, of like, come on, come on. They were exciting. I'll tell you what was more exciting about it was, we got the we made our Grand Ole Opry debut at the Ryman, which is really cool, and you know to have my mom and my dad and family see that. Yeah. Not only myself, but my little brother play that stage as well it was really exciting. But you know the, the the Opry, they were really good to us. You're only supposed to bring two players, and so but I wanted to I wanted my drummer and my bass player right. to experience his brothers as well, and so they they let it slide. I got to bring three, so I brought my little brother and those two, and so. Not only did my parents get to watch us, but their parents got to watch them the same night. So oh, it was a cool. special night. Special night at the Opry. Very awesome. And the last question I end with is much, <clears throat> much lighter. <laughs> if you were to put together the soundtrack to your life of kind of songs mm. that have been with you as you were growing up, you know, going through high school, what kind of songs are on that record? Um, what kind of songs? Put a, put a Tim McGraw album in your city player and let it play and yeah. that's kind of the way I grew up. Yeah, my, my set the circus down. Um, I, I am absolutely I'm so attached to that record. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. I, I know that's the how you feel. That's the stuff I grew up on, you know, like She's My Kind of Rain or Red yeah. Ragtop. Man, I, yeah. I don't know what the name of that album was, but the song that album I wore. Oh, the album. Dance Hall Doctors. Dance Hall Doctors, yeah. No, well, that's the other one. Those two, Circus and Doctors, it, yeah. those two together. I, I think they lived in my CD player. Yeah. For just rotating <laughs> between the two. I absolutely love those records. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you.